Welcome back to our on shape tutorial series. In this video we're going to take a look at making a Lego block. And in making a Lego block we're going to be using several tools that we've previously explored along with a couple of new tools such as our dimension tools, the fillet tool, and we're also going to take a look at a little bit of subtractive modeling. Now let's take a look at what we're actually going to make. We're going to make in particular a 2x2 two two Lego block. And here we see um, all the measurements that go into what we're going to be making here. And we're going to see how those measurements are used in a little bit. So uh, you may have noticed that a lot of those measurements are in decimal format, and that's because we actually used millimeters instead of inches. So in the document menu, I'm going to click on workspace units, and I'm going to change the default unit to millimeters, and that's going to make things a little bit easier. Since I'm going to design the top of the Lego block first, Let's create our sketch actually on the top plane this time and rotate around. And um, we're going to want to use our corner rectangle. So let's go ahead and create our shape here. And looking at our diagram, we see that 15.8 by 15.8 should give us the square we want. So 15.8, 15.8, and there's our shape. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that sketch. And let's extrude it. And if we go back to our diagram, we see that the overall height of the block itself is 9.6 before we take into account those four knobs. So 9.6 millimeters, that's going to be our extrusion height. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these additional planes here. And to do that, I'm going to hold down Shift and press P. That's going to kind of clear up our view so we can see we're doing a little bit better. Okay, so I want to make my four knobs. I want to make them on this top view. So I'm going to create a new sketch and then click on the top. And let's rotate that around a little bit. Now we're going to use a slightly different technique to do this. I'm going to actually use a point tool. And we'll see why in just a little bit. But I want four uh, knobs. So one, two three, four, and now we have our, our points here, but we can see kind of looking that they don't line up perfectly uh, in all the time here. They're kind of a little bit mismatched and that's going to be okay. See, we can use the dimension tool to take care of some stuff now to make things easier later. So I'm going to come up here and along my dimension menu, I've got this horizontal and vertical tool. So I'm going to turn the horizontal on, and I want to make these top two, um, if I'm going to click, I'm going to watch, they're going to shift position slightly. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these two points and saying I want them to line up with each other horizontally. And I'm going to use the vertical tool to do the same thing on each side. And now we have them all lined up with each other in an actual square. Now we want to position them correctly. So to do that, I need this corner to be 3.9 millimeters from both the top and the left side. So I'm going to use my dimension tool and click on the point and then click on the left side. And we're going to type 3.9. And then I'm going to click on that point and click on the top edge and make that one 3.9. Now you'll notice the other ones are definitely not exactly where we want them, but that's okay. If we look, we can see the distance between them is 8 millimeters. So I'm going to this time select the first point and then the second point, and I'm going to make that be 8 millimeters. I'm going to come back to that first point and come down to this bottom left corner and make that one 8 millimeters. And now we can see that they're all positioned where we want them to be. That's going to be helpful down the road. See, we can use these points to actually make our knobs, and now we don't have to individually position each one because they're all based on this corner piece here now. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our circle. And this center point circle means I can click this point and just kind of create a circle. In our sketch, we see that our circles here have a diameter of 5. So 5 millimeters, I'm going to type that in, 
And I'm going to do that for each of my circles. And there's number three and number four. And now I have all four circles perfectly positioned where I want them, evenly spaced out, all by using those dimension tools. So let's finish that sketch. And now we're going to extrude them. And if we look, we can see that the height of those knobs is 1.8 millimeters. So I'm going to click my extrude tool and I'm going to select all four of them and change this to 1.8. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click my green check mark. And there we go. We have the top of our Lego block created. So at least we're halfway done. Now we need to make the bottom because we know that Lego blocks need to connect to other Lego blocks and we can't really do that if the bottom of one piece is perfectly flat. We need that hollowed out in the right way to make that Lego block. So we're going to go ahead and create another sketch on the bottom. This is where subtractive modeling comes into play. So in subtractive modeling, we're removing material to make our shape. Whereas when we added those four circles to make the knobs, we were actually doing additive modeling. We were adding material to the original block. So now let's look back at our sketch. And we find this hidden line in our top view. Now that hidden line in our top view happens to mark the space that we're going to hollow out on the bottom. And if we look down here in our front view, we see that um, the edge of this is 1.49 millimeters away, and it appears to be evenly spaced all the way around. So it's a perfect square, which means I'm going to go ahead and create a square, but this time I'm going to do the center point rectangle. Um, and I'm going to move along, and there's the center of my left side, center of my right. So now I can find the center of the whole shape. I'm going to click and just move outward. And we'll notice that vertically, the distance from the edge is the same on both the top and bottom. And left and right, it is both the same. And that's going to be important for what we're doing. I'm just going to click somewhere. Now I'm going to use that dimension tool. And I'm going to dimension the left sides of both squares to be 1.49 apart. And I'm going to do the same thing from the tops. 1.49. Now we have that shape, that inner square is evenly spaced all the way around and it's at the dimensions that we have marked in our sketch. So now what we need to do is we need to um, hollow it out. And to do that, I'm going to finish my sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this square. Now, we're going to use the remove portion of our extrude menu to move it up inside and actually remove material. And looking at our sketch, we can see that it goes up 8.1 millimeters. So let's change this number, 8.1. And there we see the top of our inner hollowed out area. So let's finish that. And if you've ever looked closely enough at the bottom of a Lego piece, you know that there's typically um, some circles that come down a little bit. So here's that circle. Um, it actually comes down from the inside. Here's the left and right sides of that inner circle. So let's create a sketch, this time in this area. Now, if we happen to look, you can see how the sketch plane comes out from the sides. It kind of helps show how the sketch planes connect to whatever surface we select. So let's go ahead and draw our circle. Let's again find our center from the two sides. And there we go. We're going to click and just create our circle. Looking at our sketch, we can see the outer circle has a diameter of 6.31. So let's change that 6.31. Now there's an inner circle, and the inner circle happens to be half a millimeter from the outer circle. So we're just going to create another circle from the center, and this time use the dimension tool to say, I want these two to be 
0.5 apart. And we have our two circles. So let's finish our sketch. And let's bring this down. Now to do that, we're going to use the extrude again. This time we're creating new material. So we're adding to it. We're going to click inside the circle so they're both highlighted. And here's what we're going to do. If I look at this from the side, we see that it's obviously way too far out for what we want to make. Now I can use this arrow to try and pinpoint by dragging where I think it should be. But I'm going to have a hard time getting that accurately just by visualizing. So let's use our end type selection option. And we're going to say up to face. And we're going to click this section right here and clicking this um, this uh, kind of hollowed out rectangle. What we're going to do is we're going to say we want to bring it down so it matches that in height. And now we can see where it fits. OK, so from the looks of it, we have this all done. But there's one more thing we want to do. This is a toy used by kids. And what we've made is we've made a very crisp um, square for this. But in making that, it means we also have edges that come to very fine points. It's probably a little too fine of a point, And we would probably consider this a little sharp and slightly unsafe for younger kids. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We're going to use the fillet tool. And in using the fillet tool, what we can do is actually round off those edges a little bit. If we look at our dimensions, you'll see these radiuses that are listed here. And the radiuses all say 0 0.01. So let's click our edges. Now we can see right now 5 millimeters is obviously way too rounded. So let's change it to 0 0.01. Let's go ahead and select the next one. Notice it kind of corrects itself. And now we have these orange lines marking where our edges are, the edges that we're actually going to fill it. And let's go ahead and get the circles here. Because as we can see, that is also got the uh, fillet, the rounded edges too. And we're going to go ahead and finish that. And if we, you can't really see it here, but if we zoom in far enough, there's our slightly rounded edges. Okay, with that, we have a completed Lego puck. Thank you for watching. Um, give this a shot yourself. See if you can make this as well. Uh, challenge yourself and see if you can actually make a two by four block. What dimensions would you need to change to make that work? If you're enjoying the tutorial series, please feel free to hit that subscribe button to follow along with future tutorials here at Mythbatcher Videos.